In this lesson today, we're going to look at how we can measure the length of different objects using what's called informal units. Now, informal units just means that they're not things like a ruler or a tape measure or things that have uh, centimeters and millimeters and meters on them. They're just everyday objects that we can use to help compare and measure um, different objects. So today we're going to look at what are those kinds of object, objects, some of the examples, and also how you might go about using those objects to measure. And you can see a clue here on this first page, um, I've got some hands. So that gives you a clue as to one of the kinds of informal units that you can use. Okay, I've got some mystery objects under these black boxes. And let's have a look and see if you think that these are the kinds of things that we might be able to use uh, to measure the length of objects. Let's look at the first one here. And this is the clue we had on the first page, a hand. Do you think that a hand is something that we could use to measure the length of an object? Well, uh, it actually is. So that's one of the informal units that you might use to measure the length. Let's have a look at the next one. A finger. Now, you wouldn't just have a finger by itself. Obviously, it would be part of your hand. But do you think you could use your finger to measure the length of an object? Yep, you could. How about this next one? This is a matchstick. Do you think you could use a matchstick to measure or compare the length of different objects? Yes, a matchstick could be used as an informal unit of measuring. And the last one here, a piece of string. This is an interesting one. Could you use a piece of string to measure the length of an object? Well, you can. As long as you use that piece of string in the right way, which we'll talk about in um, a little video coming up. So now let's look at some examples of how we might go about using those informal units to measure the length of an object. So you can see I've got a, uh, a long rectangle here, and let's say that's a, a block or a piece of wood or something like that. And so we're going to use, in this example, the hands. So here's one hand and this is called a hand span. A hand span. I'll write that on here actually. Hand span. And what that means is it's the distance between this end of your hand and this end of your hand. So if you were to spread your fingers out just in front of you now while you're listening to me, if you spread your hand out as wide as you can go, the distance between your pinky and your thumb, that's a hand span. Okay, so making sure that I put my pinky right on the end of this piece of wood and then my next hand, I do the same. I put the pinky next to my thumb. And I can keep going like this. So obviously you don't have three hands, but you would then take this hand and put it over here, like that, and switch them around. So you can see on this piece of wood, I can't quite fit four hand spans. So it's just a little bit more than three hand spans. So if I was telling someone how long is that piece of wood, I could say, well, that's just a bit more than three of my hand spans. And that's an important point. The hands that you use need to be the same each time. Let's have a look at that. So in this example, we're gonna to look to see what happens if you don't follow the rules of measuring with informal units. So here's a big daddy hand, but the next one I use might be a little boy size hand or even a baby size hand by the look of that one. So does that seem like a very accurate way of measuring? I've got one great big hand and the next one I use is a little hand. 
And if you look at those two, the distance between the pinky and the thumb on this one is a lot longer than the distance between the pinky and the thumb on this one. So this one has a much bigger hand span than this one. So do you think it's very accurate? Oh, I don't think it is. Let's have a look and see what that looks like. This time I've got another size one and another size one. Okay, now depending on which one I use, I get a different measurement. You can see this one says that the piece of wood is... Mm, I can't fit three hands on there, so it's not quite three hands. But if I was to use these smaller ones, it's more than three now. If I didn't use this great big one, and I just used these ones here, it's quite a lot more than three. And if I then decided I wanted to use another little one, well, it fits more than four. So this is not a very accurate way of using informal units to measure. The rule is that if you're going to use everyday items to measure uh, objects, they need to be the same each time. So as you put one next to the other, they need to be the same. Okay, now let's have a look at using something like a piece of string. That's an interesting one, and it's very useful for when you're trying to compare uh, different objects. So you can see I've got three lines here, and I'm not really sure which one's the longest. I could probably guess that this one is probably the shortest one, but because of the way these lines are sitting here, I'm not sure which one of these two is the longest. So a piece of string is very useful for working that out. I'll play this little video and let's see um, what happens and how to use the piece of string to do that. So here's my piece of string and what I need to do is get the end of the piece of string and put it on each of these three lines. So the end goes on the end of one of the lines and I pull it down straight and I can see here that I hold my thumb at the distance at the end of the line. Now I can compare that to this one, and I can see that this line is longer than where my thumb was. So it must be a longer line. And this one is much shorter than where my thumb was. So I know that this one is the longest one. So I want to have a look at that again. Maybe I'll pause at a couple of spots here. So I use my piece of string like this. I look at the, the, the lines I want to compare, I get the end of the string, and I put it on the end of the line. So you can see right here, I've got the end of the string lined up with the end of the line. Then, I run it down, in like almost right on top of the line. And I can use my thumb here, just down here, I can, you can see my thumb is marking the spot where the end of the blue line is. So now I know that the distance on that string from the end of the string to where my thumb, that has measured the length of this line. And then I can hold that there, and I have to be careful not to move it, and I use that to compare against the other lines. So let's see what I do when I compare it. Now I take it, I don't move my thumb from the end of the string, and I hold it against this line. And now you can see that where my thumb is, is about there, but this line actually goes further than where my thumb is. So that means that this line must be longer than the first one I measured. So that's how I worked out that this line here is the longest of those three. Here's another example of using uh, informal object or informal unit to measure the length of an object. I've got a road, a piece of a track of a, a car set and I'm going to use these cars to measure how long it is. So here's my first car. I'm going to put it right on the end of the road. Then I drive my second car, will I move the road, move the second car along and put it on the end. It's no good if I leave a gap. It needs to be end to end. And then the next one, end to end, right on the end. Now, what can you tell me about these cars? They all have a letter on them, but that's just me 
having fun. But all of the cars are the same length. They're all exactly the same length. And that's that rule I said right back at the start. They need to be the same length for measuring within formal units. And I grab my last one. And I can see that this road is about four car lengths long. Pretty close to four car lengths long, maybe just a little bit more. So all of the cars have to be the same length to measure in informal units accurately. Let's see what happens when I don't follow that rule using the cars. Here's my first car. Here's my second car. You can see it's a lot longer. Here's my third car. It's longer again. And here's my teeny tiny last car. Now, remember in the last screen, the road was a little bit more than four car lengths. In this one, you can see it's less than four car lengths. Well, the road hasn't changed, so something else must have changed, and that was the way that I measured. I'm using different size and different length cars, which is not the way to use informal units. They all must be the same. Also, if I was to turn my cars off to the side like this, even though all these cars are the same length, because I've got them turned different ways, can you see how that would be a not a very accurate way to measure? I've followed all the rules, they're end to end here, they've got, they're joining on each other, they're not overlapping and there are no gaps, and they're all the same length car, but now it's way more than four car lengths. And that's because I turn the cars. So that's something that's different with the cars. And the rule is they must all be the same. That means they need to be the same length and you need to put them on the object that you're measuring in the same way. So I would need to have these all turned around to make sure that that is accurate. All right, it's time to uh, wave goodbye. It's time for you to have a bit of a practice at this. So have a look at the practice task and um, see how you go at measuring using informal units. Bye.